photographplus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 4 3ds Max fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold 4 3ds Max course, which is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold 4 3ds Max thoroughly. In this lesson, we are going to take a look at the thin film section of the standard surface shader in Arnold for 3ds Max. A thin film reproduces the effect of thin film interference on a surface, and the most obvious example would be to create a soap bubble material using the thin film property. Uh, this effect occurs on very thin transparent surfaces that their thickness is approximately that of the wavelength of visible light, which is around 500 nanometer. Obviously, if you are interested in the physical aspect of this shader and how it works in real life, you can check out related articles on web. But for now, I'm going to jump right in and start working and create some realistic looking bubbles and whatnot. So let's run the active shade. In this scene, we have an Arnold Sky Dome light that provides the HDRI lighting and a simple sphere that's going to work as our soap bubble. The sphere has an Arnold properties modifier applied to and it has a linear subdivision with iteration set to 4 because we have some displacement mapping going on. We only have some basic displacement mapping set up just to make the sphere look a bit more organic. Uh, we are using a noise texture as the displacement map to create this organic fill. The noise scale is set to 0 0.02, uh, displacement height is set to 7, and bounce pad is to, uh, set to 1. In the material editor, let's create a new standard surface shader and assign it to the sphere and make sure the active shade is running. Now let's zero out the base weight so we can see the effect a bit better. In the thin film section down here, we need to increase the thickness to something more than zero. Let's try 250 nanometers. Now to see the effect, we need to set the IOR value in the specular section to one. And now as you can see, we get this beautiful thin film look. Now let's take a look at the thin film parameters. We have thickness and this is the thickness of the thin film in nanometers. Basically the coloring of the shader depends on how thick the thin film is. So let's try 50. As you can see we have a monochromatic look. Let's go to 100. Still not much of a change. Let's try 150. And now we start to introduce some colors. Let's try 200 nanometer. Now more colors, 250. So as you can see, based on the particular look that you're after, you can use a different thickness value. Let's try 300, uh, 350 nanometers. Uh, in this case, uh, let's uh, use something like 280 nanometers. The thickness value affects the specular transmission and code components. Normally, this would be something like a noise map to give some variation to the interference effect. Let me show you how you can do that. Let's add a noise map to the material editor. Now to see how the noise appears on the sphere, we can connect the noise to a map to material node and basically assign the map to material to the sphere temporarily. And let's decrease the scale of the noise map to 0 0.02 on all dimensions and to add a bit more complexity we can set the octaves to something like 2. Now we can connect this map to the thickness value and based on the grayscale value of the noise map we are going to get different thickness values but the problem is that the noise outputs values from 0 to 1. But as you saw, we need values like 250, 400, 600 nanometers for the thickness parameter. So we need to adjust the output range of the noise node uh, from 0 to 1 to, let's say, from 250 to 500. So for that, we can add a range node and connect the output of the noise 
to the input of the range. Now in the range node, the input mean and max are obviously 0 to 1, which is coming from our noise node. And we want to adjust that range to let's say 280 and 500. So let's type in those values in the outputs mean and max. Now connect the output of the range node to the thin film thickness value. And now assign the standard surface shader again. As you can see, we have created this beautiful thin film variation and we can use different min and max thickness while using our range node. Let's try maybe something like 300 and 700. Now we get a, a combination of 300 to 700 and in between while use on our sphere. Or you can basically adjust the noise node, use different scale while use, use different uh, octave and frequency while use and get different results. Uh, in this case, let's set the output mean to 280 and max to 350. Just a bit of variation. We really don't want to go crazy on this unless that is something that you are looking for. Now, IOR in the thin film section is the refractive index of the medium surrounding the material. Now, let's finalize our soap bubble shader. If the shader were trying to apply the thin film effect, we didn't have any transparency like Mother of Pearl, for example. We don't need to change anything in the transmission section to make the material transparent. But in the case of soap bubble, uh, we do need transparency. So in the transmission section, let's increase transmission weight to one. And obviously we don't need any roughness in our specular or transmission section. So set the specular roughness to zero. And let's increase the coat weight to 1 or probably something like 0.5 where we're in lower values and zero out its roughness as well. In the thin film section, we can use an IOR from 1.33 to 1 1.4. Let's uh, try 1.33 for now. And here is our beautiful soap bubble shader. So in this lesson, we learned about the thin film section of the Arnold standard surface shader in Arnold for 3ds Max. See you next time. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold for 3ds Max fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max course, which is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for 3ds Max thoroughly.